السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته آه ان شاء الله النهاردة هنوضح ازاي بنعمل فحص لعيان او مريض آه باحد امراض الدم How to examine a case with a hematological disorder uh, Usually any examination uh, starts by inspection Uh, general uh, examination first and later we will discuss how to examine local uh, parts. Uh, general examination starts by uh, looking to the patient condition. The patient looks good general condition and uh, um, uh, with uh, oriented to time, place and uh, person and uh, uh, there is some Uh, pallor. Sit down, please. Uh, when we check for the pallor, usually we check the pallor at the lower lip by doing like that, or checking the lower eye uh, lid to uh, check for pallor and Balmer creases. Uh, as you see, there is evident pallor in this case. Uh, also, checking the nails, there is, as you see, pallor or white uh, colored nail. Uh, after that, we will look for jaundice and usually we check jaundice in the lower fornix of the, uh, of the uh, eye. There is tinge of jaundice, as you see. Other colors like cyanosis, we ask the patient to open his mouth, open your mouth. There is no cyanosis. If there is any scars or rash or uh, abnormal pigmentation, we will give comment on it. In this patient, as you see, there is a cocktail of uh, jaundice with uh, balor give him the ashy color. You look to his face, there is uh, ashy color and also he has special character. Uh, you, he looks like um, Asian or mongoloid faces. Uh, this is uh, a special uh, uh, features for him. After that, we are going to examine the Uh, the, uh, after that, we are going to examine the lymph nodes. When we examine the lymph nodes, there is groups. Please. We have to position the patient. We will first start by submental lymph node, submandibular lymph node, rolling the lymph node to Uh, against the bone like that, pre-auricular, post-auricular, and the occipital lymph nodes, like that. This is the first group. After that, we will go to the cervical group. We have superficial and deep cervical group, and there is upper and lower cervical either superficial and deep. We will do like that. We have to just kink his head to relax the sternomastoid. And starting by the superficial group, which is superficial to the sternomastoid, and upper and lower, like that. After that, we will bench the sternomastoid to examine the deep cervical group, upper and lower. The same on the other side. We can examine lymph node from the back like that or from the front. I feel here some lymph node about cent uh, one centimeter in diameter. They are The lymph nodes are separated, they are not matted and not attached to any overlying or underlying structure and they are not tender. Uh, in consistency, it is soft in consistency. 
After that, we will go to the supraclavicular lymph nodes. We ask the patient just to do like that maneuver and to try to supraclavicular, right and left supraclavicular, uh, infraclavicular, and the axillary lymph nodes. We will shift to the axillary lymph nodes. Ask the patient to expose the axilla, and we have the upper apical group of lymph nodes. We have the lateral group of lymph nodes. We have medial and uh, this is the, the maneuver we have to to relax and to put the hand in the axilla. First, to bring the apical group, there is, I feel here, some lymph nodes. They are also soft, about two centimeter in diameter. Hmm? This is the apical group. When I pinch the pectoralis like that, this is the anterior group, and pinching the back muscle will feel some groups of lymph nodes, this is the posterior axillary lymph nodes. Uh, medial axillary, they are lying on the uh, medial wall of the axilla. Still, there is lymph node here, about two centimeter firm in character. And the lateral group are here along the uh, lateral axilla, lateral part of the axilla. The same here. When we examine the right hand, we have to relax his hands and put the, uh, your right hand on the apex and try first to bring the apical group again. So, anterior and posterior and the lateral and medial group of lymph nodes. So, after I examine the axilla, there is a, a lymph node, apical and uh, medial lymph nodes, uh, firm in consistency, about two centimeter in diameter, uh, not matted, and not attached to overlying or underlying skin, and they are not tender. After that, there is the other groups of lymph nodes, the epitrochlear lymph nodes. The epitrochlear lymph node are present here along the tendon, and so I have to roll my hand like that to try to catch the uh, lymph node. The same on the other side we will do, trying to find epitrochlear lymph node. There is, still there is one centimeter epitrochlear lymph node, bilateral, right and left, firm in consistency, not tender, not attached to overlying or underlying skin. Then we will examine the inguinal group of lymph nodes. We have the transverse group, vertical group, and we will try to roll it uh, across the uh, inguinal uh, ligaments to try to examine for the still there is lymph node. Uh, after that, so the transverse and vertical uh, group like that. By the end, there is the popliteal group of lymph nodes. I can't feel them now. Okay, that's all. This is the maneuver how to examine lymph nodes of the patient. For any hematological case, we have to check for any rash, especially petechial rash, berbera, or ecchymotic patches. Uh, 
examination also of the lower limbs is very important in our cases. As we see here, we have to look for any pigmentation and there is black pigmentation or dark pigmentation on both lower limbs. Also, there is scar of previous ulcers present. Okay, and I will check for edema. Edema of the lower limbs, we will start by checking behind the medial malleolus, going up, up, up. As regard the right lower limb, there is no edema. Here, it is tender. If I press, it will hurt him. So I will go away from the... There is no chain edema, only there is mild edema related to the scar of the patient. Okay. We will shift now to examine, okay, and there is no rash, only pigmentation. We will shift to local examination of the abdomen. We have to examine for organomegaly, either spleen, liver, um, uh, if there is any uh, other masses, uh, lymph nodes, uh, or any masses inside the abdomen. Uh, comment about the symmetry, symmet sy uh, symmetry of the abdomen. Is it symmetrical or not symmetrical? If there is any uh, bulge, if uh, there is any scar of previous operation, as we see here, there is a scar of previous operation, and the umbilicus is uh, shifted slightly downwards. How we can prove it? Either by measuring the uh, space, uh, the, the space from the, uh, the fisternum uh, to the uh, umbilicus and from the umbilicus to the symphysis pubis. Here there is shift of the umbilicus downwards. Uh, so by inspection we find that there is a score of previous operation and there is shift of the umbilicus, no visible uh, uh, masses, and there is, uh, there is a pulsation in the epigastrium. After confirming this pulsation, we find that it is coming from the aorta as transmitted aortic pulsation. <coughs> After that, we will examine for splenomegaly uh, because the spleen in our uh, branch in hematology is very important uh, to search for. As usual, we will start by superficial bulbation starting from the right iliac fossa, anti-clockwise and looking to the patient face for any tenderness or any expression if there is pain no. area by area and so there is nothing there is no uh, I can't feel any uh, abnormal uh, masses or tenderness in by superficial bulbation we will shift to the deep bulbation to examine for the spleen we also will start from the right uh, iliac fossa and obliquely upwards because the spleen, when enlarged, it goes down. In these patients, there is this scar is a scar of splenectomy. It is splenectomized. So, uh, most probably, we, we, can, we will not find spleen. But sometimes, there is uh, 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 a condition called splenosis, and uh, another spleen grows up. Here, there is nothing for the spleen. This is the first maneuver to examine for the spleen. Second maneuver is doing, if I can't find the spleen, I can do by manual, by manual, by putting my left hand on the back and going again in the same direction, trying to find the spleen by, by manual examination. Also, there is no spleen. Okay. If we are expecting or there is a huge amount of water or something, we can do something called dipping method. 
finding the spleen by dipping method, but I just try to do the maneuver. This is dipping, it is like dipping a, a, a ball or something like that to try to find out any hidden spleen under a huge, if there is uh, fluids inside. Okay, after that, we will examine for the liver. Examining for the liver from the right iliac fossa upward, and usually your finger is parallel to the surface, lower surface and lower border of the liver, like that. <coughs> okay. I can find here that the liver is below the costal margin with sharp edge, firm in consistency. I have to examine for the upper border before uh, saying that there is enlarged liver or shrunken liver. I have to bring the upper border of the uh, liver by counting the second space on the right side, trying to do percussion, third, fourth, start here in bird down. So the liver starts, upper border starts here. By bringing the lower border and the upper border of the liver, we can measure the span, the liver span, which is the accurate measurement of the liver clinically, uh, and we will express it in centimeter. This is the right lobe of the liver. Still there is left lobe of the liver. We are going to start here from the umbilicus, going upward in this direction, trying, take a breath please, trying to ask the patient, خد نفس حبيبي, asking the patient, to take a breath and while he is inhaling and exhaling, try to find the organ. Don't push the organ, otherwise it will disappear. Khud nafas. During inspiration, nafas, nafas, nafas. You will find the organ pushing your hand. If you fight with the organ, it will disappear and there will be a guarding rigidity. So to facilitate examination of any organ, either spleen or liver, you have to ask the patient to take a press. Nafas. And try to go like that. Like that. I'm repeating the maneuver. Nafas. 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 Okay, to revise again how to examine a hematological case, we started by general examination, examining the complexion, the colors, uh, pallor, jaundice, uh, scars, uh, any uh, rash, uh, followed by examination of the lymph nodes, starting from the head and neck, axilla, epitrochlear, epipletial, and uh, then we, sh uh, and inguinal uh, group. After that, one of the most important is to examine the abdomen of the patients for organomegaly, and we see the how to examine. To revise, again, we start abdominal examination by superficial palpation, anti-clockwise like that, to search for tenderness or any rigidity or any masses, area by area like that, and we shift to deep examination, or deep palpation, and we searched for the spleen in this maneuver, starting from the right iliac fossa up to the spleen. Star, uh, uh, we bring the uh, upper border of the liver by counting for the second space here at the zephysternal angle and go down by heavy per, uh, percussion till the embird node. Here, when the embird node, this is the upper border, and the lower border, starting from the right iliac fossa, upward, after asking the patient to take nafas, to take a deep breath and try to find the lower border. When we find the lower border, we will give comment about the size of the organ, the consistency, and surface of the liver, and the 
uh, edge, if it is sharp edge. Here I find the lever about two fingers of the patient. We, we measure it, two fingers of the patient, uh, from the patient's fingers below the costal margin, and I measured the span of the liver. The, the edge is sharp edge and consistency firm in consistency. There is no spleen, as we see, because it is already splenectomized. Uh, this is how to uh, find uh, by palpation. After that, there is percussion, and the percussion usually we percuss the drops area for the spleen just to complete the examination and uh, percussion for any fluid inside the abdomen by bilateral shifting dullness away from any organomegaly going laterally by percussing the abdomen like that. Okay. Ask the patient to turn and wait for one minute and try to uh, do percussion again. If there is any fluid, the fluid will shift downwards and the dullness will change to, um, to uh, resonance. Here, there is a change in the notes, so most probably there is fluid. We, do, we did it here, and we have to do it on the other side also. As you see, start the dullness, ask the patient to turn to the other side, and wait for a while until the fluid will collect down and the intestine and air comes up so there is no change in notes as I see so most probably there is no uh, there is no fluids here um, maybe it is loaded colon maybe uh, uh, it is uh, Anyway, there is no acetic fluid. Okay. After that, we will auscultate. We complete the examination by auscultating the abdomen for any abnormal sound or uh, a silent abdomen. By this way, we uh, complete examining the uh, patient with a hematology. This is the most important point I have to examine for, and thank you.